Hello friends, hope you are well. Techman Pat here. Today we're going to be reviewing this, the Creelty Ender S1 Pro. That's right, if you've seen my previous review of just the S1, this is the Pro. I will link that video below. This is an upgraded version, the professional version, and this video is sponsored by Pergear, so check out their website below. They have a whole bunch of gadgets and, of course, 3D printers, and if you want this specific printer, I have linked to their Australian Amazon store below, and the US store if you are from the US. So let's get started with this review of the Ender S1 Pro. Let's start with some differences, and unfortunately they are fairly minor because at this price, 729 Australian dollars, this is not a cheap printer. Now you have to also factor in the current geopolitical situation where inflation has gone through the roof in pretty much most Western countries. Apparently China's only got 1.5%, what? In any case, prices have gone up and obviously the stock level issues and delivery times, but it is from Amazon. They have it on hand at the moment with the links that I've provided, $729 get you a very premium printer. But what's the difference in this Pro version and just the standard S1 version? Well, the first difference is the nozzle. It can go up to 300 degrees, which is absolutely incredible for a domestic device. Obviously, ovens do, but something so small going up to 300 degrees right at the point is pretty incredible. And that means that the bits inside here are also very, very high quality. And Creality has been created in very good quality printers in the last 10 years. That nozzle reaching those high temperatures allows you to print on different types of plastics from PLA to ABS, PVA, wood, TPU, PETG, and PA. And I'll put some of those that I've been using and that I liked and have worked really well with this printer below. Um, there'll be Amazon links for you to find. The next difference is this print plate right here. It is magnetic, it is metal, and the surface of this is a little bit golden. It's a little bit of a mismatch in color, but it has the best adhesion I have seen on a plate like this in a long time. It leaves absolutely no marks after printing and it comes off really, really easily. But while it is in heat or <laughs> warm, it holds the print on really, really well. Once it cools down, you can literally flick it off the base plate and it just comes off really easily, which is incredible, which is exactly what you want it to do. While the printer is printy, you want this to stay in one place and not move, and when you actually want to take it off and it's nicely cooled, then it's really easy to take off. And finally, the biggest change is actually this thing right here. The screen is a touchscreen, 4.3 inches, and it's such a pleasure to use. I have to admit, like, I know the buttons and scrolling through was okay, but touch screens, it's where it's at. It's very responsive, it's intuitive, and it's really easy to use. And as a package at $729, with the range of things that you can actually print from the types of plastic that you utilize is fantastic. Now let's talk about the features that just generally come with the S1. And of course, that is the BL Touch Leveler right there. Uh, works brilliantly every time. The first layer that gets printed on is fantastically nicely adhered to, and the adjustability through the touchscreen is really easy, so you can always make sure that it's the right um, distance from the build plate, and usually it's about a paper length, um, to put a paper and just sort of pull it down until it touches, and then do the auto bed leveling. You don't have to worry about these anymore. Those springs are really good though in this one, in the Pro version, so I do have to point that out. Um, they're a little bit better than the S1 that's just behind me over there, and again, that video review is in the comments below. Now looking around the spring area, you also get a little handle to pull the deck back, uh, especially when it finishes the print, it usually ends up at the back, so you wanna bring it forward. It has a little handle instead of grabbing the hot end, which is great. Uh, in the previous versions, you didn't have that, and of course, this is probably the first one that I've seen that has something like that from Creality, and it makes it a little bit easier, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make or break the actual device. Uh, overall, the build quality is brilliant. You've got a little light up top here, which shines down as a switch on the side, which allows you to 
I don't know, I guess see what you're doing. But it's great for those people who want to have a little camera that captures the print and you can see it over time how it looks and builds up. I think that's part of what makes it really cool and that light is helpful especially if you want to turn the light the rest of the lights off in the house or you have this in a spare room you don't have to have the lights on when you're doing a time lapse of the print the direct drive is fantastic i would say if you're ever buying a printer please buy a direct drive printer which means that the actual motor that moves the plastic down into the hot end is right next to the hot end and it just makes it easier and it, it, there's less problems that can happen usually there's like a motor on the side in the olden days and it would feed it through a plastic tube in here and you can imagine if the motor is far away from the actual heat end and you're pushing things through it, it loses some energy as it pushes through the plastic tube here and you can see that on my review of the Ender 3 Pro which is not the S1 version obviously um, back in the day a couple of years ago I'll link that below also it is a better solution this way. Fan over here is nice and quiet the loudest part is actually the internal fan and it's kind of annoying but the board is silent so you don't hear that dial up sound when you're actually printing and overall the construction quality is fantastic it's really really solid and it was very easy to put together the base comes in as one the screen on the side is another piece and the bits over here are pieces that you screw in but all this bit is together and the only separate part up top is these two things you've also got a run out sensor right here which helps with stopping the print when things happen so if you run out of this coil over here it'll actually stop the print so you get a chance to replace it and there's a way you could sort of splice them together with a little bit of heat I've done it before it's worked uh, it doesn't it's not perfect but it stops the print and you can get a chance to do something about it which is fantastic and speaking of print stopping when the power goes out which it happens a lot in my house right now this stops and resumes really easily and it worked really well and I want to share a couple of examples of prints that I've done let's take a closer look at the tests here we have test number one and test number two. You may be wondering how I know the difference. Well, I actually wrote underneath, but if we have a quick look at it, you can see that there's really very minor differences and issues that if you reprint will probably go away. But let's start with the overhangs. At 80 degrees, you can see that there is some little um, bits coming out and that's overhanging. And that is the same on this one right here. We've also got another little overhang issue here when uh, something kind of slipped out and, and broke off and allowed things to just uh, not work very well. But that didn't stop any of the other bits and pieces. Other than that, that's the only two minor imperfections that you can see. This one right here has also a minor imperfection in that section too. Um, but other than that, let's have a Look, this is the S1 Pro and this is the S1. This is something you can dial in with the actual settings. And this is what I was talking about before. This version, the S1 Pro, just requires a lot more dialing in to get it to the perfection that I think S1 is actually doing. So Rani was printed standing up. She got quite high. You can see the cloak here is beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. But you can also see some of the lines going horizontal across here. On the back, it's much clearer that there are some horizontal issues coming through in this SI printer, obviously the Pro. But this is pretty negligible because it can happen to any printer. Um, but it does have a beautiful, beautiful quality in itself. It's very, very smooth. And I have to admit, I really, really like this print and she lights up at night. The gown here looks really, really nice and it's so smooth. And finally, my favorite one out of all of them, the little octopus that could. He's squishy, fun to play with, and printed absolutely stunningly and beautifully. And this is where the S1 Pro stands out. Printing this squishy PLA is only possible on this direct drive 300 degree hot end it allows for this to be consistently kept at a higher temperature because it's not about going up to 300 degrees it's about keeping 250 very very equally and consistently now this pla was a little bit more difficult to print because it actually lights up at night it has some fluorescent uh, bits inside you can see them as little dots and overall it means that it's not quite a solid plastic there are little bits in between but this printer with its higher capacity to actually heat that hot hand was really helpful in this i did it at about 225 to get this to work and um i just look honestly i just googled what's the best temperature 
temperature to print at those types of PLA uh, plastics and 220 was the one I did 225 because it was a bit cold in my house and it worked out really, really well. I'm very happy with this. And again, it was the first go. I loaded it up on the little memory stick right here and yeah, it worked really, really well. The last one that I printed that was soft and plushy is an iPhone 12 case that I just got off the internet again. It had a big base on the bottom and was able to stick down really, really well. Um, I would say that this plastic is really cool and obviously it's 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 squishy and stuff. Um, I probably won't be printing cases for my phone, not because it doesn't fit, but because, well, I don't know if it looks that great. Like there's not that many cool designs um, that you can get. And and the pain of it is that, you know, 3D printing isn't perfect. There are going to be imperfections every so often. And if you look really closely on this, there are imperfections where the plastic just maybe seeped out a little bit and things like that. And you can obviously control all that through the software in here, like how fast it comes out, what the speed of the print is. But I would say people who buy this one, they probably don't want to fiddle around with too much stuff, too much software. They just want to plug it in and print. And I have to admit, this is a very plug in and play friendly device. However, I would say the S1 non pro is better for plug in and play because I had to fiddle around with the settings a little bit more than I did with the other printer. So let's talk about the failures because there was quite a few. This is a failure of one of the cases. And of course it was lifting the edges because of heat. And one of the biggest things people complain about is that, oh, my 3D printer doesn't do the first layer very well. Well, in the case of this printer, because you've got the BL touch, you've got a fantastic leveling system and that hot end is connected straight to that direct drive right here. Your first layer is gonna be in the best shape it can be. And the biggest variable is actually your PLA plastic and not all of them are built equally. I could have the same color, same type of PLA, on this printer and both will print the first layer differently. So that's something to keep in mind. Make sure you get the reviews of what plastic you're printing. The ones I'll put below uh, will be the ones that print well and I won't be sharing this one because it doesn't print very well but this one prints really nicely and the blue one is fantastic. The other things that failed a lot were things that were very tall. Um, this is an egg dispenser or part of it and it got halfway and it failed and I figured out that it was because once it gets a little bit higher, the actual printer has a hard time not knocking it. it the layers seem to get a little bit squished at a certain area. And that was actually easily fixed by just giving it a bit of an airbrush around here with the dust. I realized there was a little dust bubble that was hitting it every time it was going up to that level and it would have an issue. But once you sort that out, make sure you have a dust free area when you do it. So before any print, give it some air in a can and it'll be fine. So $729, is this device worth it? I don't think so. I think you'd better off go with the S1, the non-pro version, unless you specifically want the higher hot end. But the light and this base plate is really good. So it's kind of a bit of a balance, but you can get this base plate separately and you can add another light. So my suggestion is I'll put the link below to the S1 it is much cheaper and I think it is a much better starter device but if you've already got a printer and you want to just move up you know that 0.5 or 1 percent then this is probably the one to go for because because the one thing that's stopping me from ultimately saying don't buy it at all because of the price is actually this screen the screen is really really good and it makes the whole operation of the system much easier much more intuitive and it doesn't feel like this underground thing this printer makes 3d printing feel like it's mainstream especially with this touch screen so friends, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Pergear for sending me this device for review. The link to their store is below. They have a lot more gadgets than just printers. Check them out, really good stuff. And of course, the links to all the Amazon products that you'll see here are in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.